In this chapter, we'll introduce the notions and basic notations about theory of languages that we'll use in this course. An alphabet is a finite set whose elements are called symbols. We'll usually denote it by uppercase sigma. Although any finite set can be an alphabet, its elements are usually denoted by letters or digits. For example, the set AB would be a possible alphabet. A word built on a certain alphabet is a list of symbols from the alphabet. For example, AB would be a word containing the symbols A and B. We also have BBB as a word built on this alphabet as well as A. And over any alphabet we can always construct the word of length 0 or empty word. This word will be denoted by a lambda. Note that lambda is not a symbol of the alphabet. It is a meta symbol that is used to denote the list of land zero. We did not define formally the concept of a list and we won't do that neither for the concept of a set. That's because we consider that uh, these concepts belong to the basics required for the, for this subject and hence won't be defined formally. This might cause some troubles further in the course when we try to prove some basic properties. And in these cases, we'll just assume the correctness of such properties or justify them in any intuitive way. We'll use letters U, V, and W with possible subindexes to denote words. In this way, we denote the length of a word U. For example, the length of the word AB is 2. The length of BBB is 3 the length of A is 1, and the length of the empty word is 0. This notation extends to denote the number of occurrences of a word within another. In this case, occurrences of the word W within the word U. For example, the number of occurrences of A in AB is 1, the number of occurrences of B in BBB is 3, and the number of occurrences of the word BB in BBB is 2, the one at position 1 and the one at position 2. In this way we denote the symbol at position i of a word u. For example, AB has an A at position 1 and a B at position 2. By the product operation, the note by a point with infix notation and sometimes without the point, we denote the concatenation of two words. In this case, the concatenation of U and B. The concatenation is an operation that yields a result the concatenation of the list that are being operated in order. For example, the concatenation of AB and BBB produces the word containing an A followed by four Bs. The empty word is the identity element for the concatenation operation. This can be easily proven. Moreover, it is also easy to check that Word concatenation is associative. By sigma start, we denote the set of all the words that can be constructed on an alphabet sigma. If sigma is AB, we can construct all the possible words starting with lambda, then the two words of length 1, the four words of length 2, and so on. A language over an alphabet sigma is any subset of sigma star. Let's see some examples of languages. The language of the words over our alphabet of even length can be represented in this way. Note that we are using essentially the classic notation for sets where we write in first place the variable and after the bar symbol we write the properties that this variable has to hold to belong to the language. The same language of the words over our alphabet of even length can be represented in a more explicit way. In this way, we represent the words containing an A. Again, we use the classic notation for sets, and in this case, the property is expressed by means of an existential quantifier. If W coincides with the concatenation of any word W1, the symbol A, in any word W2, 
then it satisfies our property. Alternatively, we can also represent it in this way, taking profit of the notation to represent the number of A's in our word. In this case, we want to represent all the words such that every occurrence of A is directly followed by an occurrence of B. A possible way to denote it is this one. Let's see how does the universal quantifier works when combined with the implication. What we are saying here is that for any words W1, W2, such that W can be expressed as the concatenation of W1, symbol A, and W2, it holds that W2 begins with a B. Note that for every pair of words W1, W2, not satisfying that W can be expressed as the concatenation of W1, the symbol A, and W2, the antecedent of the implication is false, and hence the implication is true. This guarantees that the consequent has to be satisfied just for the partitions of the word W that we are interested in. An alternative way for describing that set is the following. That again takes profit of the notation that we just introduced to represent the number of occurrences of a word within another. The words that we want to capture are those that does not have any subword AA and moreover do not end with an A. We denote this second restriction by saying that either W is the empty word or it ends with a B.